Hello. Can you hear me? Does this thing work? Is anybody there? Hey man, how it's going? How's the sound? Awesome. So uh, today I'm just gonna. This guy's like I've been working. I've I worked on this guy like three years ago. So I'm just gonna continue uh, continue this guy. Um, I just wanna don't wanna do the legs and stuff. So this is I'm kind of tired. Work on this guy. So I'm just gonna uh, treat it as a as a picture. So I'm gonna just select an angle, probably this one. Pose it. And then I'm. I want to add some, like if it was if it was like in repair mode. Let's say if if there was like uh, some arms that is is uh, sewing some stuff, or and then I hang hang this guy with some chain and then straps, and then kind of kind of just make an image, like uh, I res image all of this guy, but like I'm gonna render it with multiple passes and then add some scratch and stuff. Hey, tsunami, tomatachi, tomatachi. How is going, man? So uh, first of all, um, I just rename every sub tool here because I I want to use the transpose master just to quickly pose it. Uh, so it's important when you use the transpose master to don't have any uh, duplicated name. Also, I just want to remove anything that that is hidden that I don't need. So next, that looks good. I have a little macro here um, in my macros called rename it all. So I'm just gonna show you quickly. Um, if you go in your ZBrush folder here for hate, and you go into and you go into the Z startup, you have a macro folder here, and then I just put a subfolder called Ali. And I have a macro here called rename all. So here, uh, you need to have this uh, DLL uh, file. So in order to rename multiple subtool, and here is the is the name of the of the subtool that's gonna be renamed for. In this case, it could be like robot. It's like it's hard coded. I don't just don't don't give a just. Just to rename my subtool quickly, so like uh, I could say uh, like fast robot, I call it for now. And then you need this DLL, um, so you can grab. Hey, twistle back. How it's going, man? So if I go to uh, ZBrush, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go into ZBrush here and put the name of the file Z file details. So you you'll you'll come into the documentation of ZBrush and there there's this file here. Download the latest Z file util DLL here. If you open it. Hey Thomas, comment ça va? How it's going, man? 
So here you have the zutil file uh, 64.dll so you can just go ahead and uh, put it wherever you want. Me I usually put it in Z, Z startup zplug x64 and you can see I put it here and then in your macro here I'm gonna give the macro if you want uh, you just tell the path like that's the zbrush uh, startup folder zplug 64 and z file util and I've taken this from uh, Z zbrush control or something and then uh, what it basically this day I'll do I think it just press the enter key after it renames the tool and then it's gonna go through all the subtools and just rename it uh, to whatever here with the with the number at the end. So that's pretty handy when you want you you just want to be sure you don't have any duplicate names and uh, you want to use the tipos master. Oh, ZBrush operative sounds sounds cool, sir. In Bordeaux, sounds like uh, sounds like fun. What is it gonna be? It's gonna be like with friends or like with different peoples in the industry. So now I have all my uh, reading tools, so I can just go ahead and uh, use the Z plugin, Tipos Master. And then just send it to tipos. Also, a good thing uh, when you want to uh, use the tipos is to bake all the layer. So I have another macro here that's gonna go to all the subdiv and bake uh, the layer. So I don't have it here. So it's because it's an old. But uh, I'm just gonna do it quickly. Basically, you, you can create a new macro here, and you don't want to initialize ZBrush. So I said no. And then you bake, just click on it, bake all layer, and then end the macro. And save it wherever you want. Well, I put it on my desktop. And then you can copy the bake layer all here. And I'm going to go into my four or eight folders, the startup, macros, Ali. And then uh, just take any any uh, macro here, copy paste, and this one I'm, I'm gonna call it fake all layers. I'm gonna go to my rename all, copy paste it, and then I'm gonna remove this here. I don't need this. And so I have a loop of 200, so it's just going to go 200 times um, in the loop. So if you have more than 200 subtools, you can just hire this number here. Hey guys, hey mud factors. Oh, that's cool, huh? Z brushes, Z brush events is always nice. So, uh, I, need, I need to take this here, bake all layers, copy it here. So I can provide you this macro if you need it. And macro reload all, and then now you have bake all layers. So if you, so if I click it, just go into all the sub tools and then bake the layers. To be sure, I don't have layers because. Sometimes it can mess with the tipos master, so it's always a good idea to just uh, just prep your, your object before sending it to the tipos master. Thanks, all uh, nineteen. Oh shit! Paris one the easy brush like that would be awesome. Where are you here? Where are you in uh, the uh, in, in Bordeaux?
By the way, this robot, I did it since a long time ago. Um, this is a kind of robot uh, I wanted to do uh, to be like very fast, like a kind of a, a slim Hulk that can like run super fast and it can uh, jump super high and then control is it's jumping with all those those wings. Hey, bro. 4210, bonjour. Which question? Which question? Quelle question t'as pas compris? Okay, so now I baked all the layer. Also, what what I could do? It's um, going to display visibility. I think I'm just going to try it before on, a, on another object here. I'm just going to duplicate it here. And basically, I want, just want to be sure there's no hidden object into my uh, into any subtool when it, when I T pulls them. Well, I think if you go in visibility here and then you show points, it's going to show everything. So I can just add this to my macro. I'm just going to say no. Then click on show point and macro. I'm just gonna override this guy. Take the show point. And I'm gonna just call it instead a prep. Oops. I'm just gonna show point before baking the layers. I think that's all what I need to do. Maybe unmask everything. Clear mask, so I'm gonna create a macro. Clear a mask. Macro and macro. Take it. And here, save. Go into ZBrush. Macro, reload all. Now I have a uh, prep tipples. I'm just gonna run this on the good sub tool. You can freeze. There's some option to freeze the UI when you load a macro. That's a good thing. It's a bit faster. So right now it's unhiding everything, unclear the mask, bake all the layers. Hey, right, all 19, what, what question did, did you not... Uh... C'est quoi la question que tu n'as pas compris? Hein? I'm just going to put like closer here. It's going to be so long. Well, I can just, now that my thing is. Uh, I'm just gonna put it here. Call it fast robot. Okay, so now I have a perfect tool to go into my tipples master. I have 102 uh, two tools, so just go into uh, Z plugin, transpose, tipples. Don't touch the screen when it's doing this. Waiting.
asked, well, where, where do you guys come from? Oh, nice, Brazil. Belgium, yeah, I love Belgium too. I'm going in France uh, this winter. It's pretty close. I want to go to Belgium once too. I don't want to. Oh shit, Tilde de la Réunion. I almost went there to study. Uh, I was at um, Ile de la Réunion, Réunion Island. Uh, I was in a program where they was doing some uh, exchange between the university and uh, I, I absolutely wanted to go to the um, to to that program there was like a Maya course and Lille, that would have been crazy but then I changed my uh, like there was an opening of a brand new program with the same university but in Montreal so I did the shift and because of that, I couldn't do that program anymore. So, but my friends went there for for study. Looks absolutely amazing. Oh, Poland! There's there's people from everywhere. Oh, LA is awesome. I just come from there. I really like LA. Oh, Seattle, close to Vancouver. Never went there to Greece. Yeah. Oh, two people from Seattle. That's awesome. That's insane. No, all different country people are. are. So uh, now um, that's a big mess. So I'm, I'm gonna try with the Tipos Master. You can always. Uh, it's a good habit also to quick save when you're in Tipos Master. Because uh, if you lose things, you're gonna lose everything. You're gonna have two tipples, yeah. Ah man, I would have loved to go to a re reunion island. My friend was sending pictures. I was like, ah, uh. because I did all the all the paperwork to go there, but uh, yeah, it didn't work. Do you have those? Uh, do you have those uh, IIS kind of creatures? Uh, the, the animals. Uh, it looks like uh, Lemurian. Like you mostly find them on uh, Madagascar Island, but I think you have some in uh, Reunion Island too. What stage is that at? Uh, it was a university called um, was a university called uh, Université du Québec en Abitibi Timiskaming. It's a Quebec university. It was far far in the north of Quebec, but uh, when I was there, they were they're doing a this because it's in a far region of uh, Quebec, so they're doing a lot of programs to exchange like with France, with like uh, Island Re uh, La Réunion, with Chinese too. So they exchange a lot of uh, of student. Uh, to bring people into the that area of the Quebec, but when I was there, they opened a program in Montreal. So uh, me, I was from Montreal, so I, I moved to that that program, which was the same university, but it was a, a, like a campus. Hey man, love your art and stream. Right? Thanks, man. Thanks, uh, Jar Jar Nix. Do you upload your broadcast your broadcast to YouTube or something? Can't always do. Uh, no, I don't personally, but on uh, this channel, it's uh, Pixelogic uh, Streams. Uh, they are uploaded on Pixelogic uh, channel if you go on YouTube. Uh, uh, why I use Tipos Master? Because, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, I can move. I'm not sure with the. I can move everything like this with the move brush. I think the other one just worked with the gizmo, which is fine uh, for. But uh, for this guy, I might want to move the head uh, with, with like some smooth 
I can just go ahead and unmask here. And I'm used to the, the tipples master. I use it a lot before, so. So I'm just gonna create polygroups here. And I, I can create custom polygroups. Like if I select everything here and I'll just go ahead and create a polygroups, it's gonna, it's gonna re retain this polygroups. I'm just gonna create one polygon right here like this. Or one like this, so I have two different arm. I could always make one for the head, so it's gonna be easier to come back. So I can mask here and hide everything, inverse the mask. And now I can start to move. I just I won't do like a big pulse. I'm just gonna like relax him a little bit so it doesn't look too much symmetrical. Maybe turn around some some pieces, but uh, yeah, just just a slight pulse to just to to make it look look less uh, CG. Now we have. Uh... Oh no! Why is that? Yeah, no problem. How do you do this poly level? Oh, okay. I don't know what which which poly level are you talking about. I'm just uh, that's a tipples master. So if you have here the Z plugin, you have the tipples mesh. And then what it's doing is that it's taking all those sub tools with very high uh, high resolution here. And here it's taking the low resolution of all the sub tool, combining it together. It's it's a big it's one tool, one sub tool now. Then you can move everything around, and then when you're done, you go to the Z plugin here, T pose to sub D, and then it's gonna bring back everything here and pose with all your uh, subdivision levels. The thing is very important here; it's not to scale anything. I can show you why in a minute. Uh, let's say in ZBrush, you have here up in a sphere let's say you have a 3d sphere here i'm just gonna create a simpler sphere just to just to show it like a q sphere and then let's say I subdivide it a couple of time i go into standard and then i just brush things if you go to the lower subdivision level and you just scale it like a lot when you come back to your IRS, you see that uh, the detail change. So it's very important not to scale at the lower subdivision level, never, but to, to scale it with the highest subdivision levels uh, active. So I did some macros to do this, but uh, yeah, that's that's super important. So when you are here, for the same reason, uh, it's very important not to scale everything. Yeah, man, exactly. I always start with Dynamesh. You can see it here. Uh, maybe if I go on this one. Like this guy, but I, I screwed it because uh, every time I'm adding a new piece, I'm just cleaning so it go under the piece. But basically, uh, yeah, I start with Dynamesh and then just build build parts clean on top of it. I started this, I think in 4 or 6, like 3 years ago, then there was the 4 or 7 who came out with the Z Mother and all those stuff. But I continued it a little bit, so that's that's a pretty old piece, but uh, since it's, it's pretty far, I just want to finish it, pose it quickly. Uh, there I have the, the arm, that's a bit annoying. I'm gonna have to bend that arm eventually. I can, I can always do some other stuff with the four eight gizmo. Uh, why, why? 
yeah but as you see for the, the the sphere here i guess yeah check check if i scale there like let's say i'm just gonna do a year like a little smiley look at what it looks now looks like now and look if i scale it i'm gonna scale it like very huge It's hard to see. I'm gonna go into the deformation here and just get it with the size instead. A couple of time, like very huge. Now you see, everything's everything disappear. Like I don't have my detail anymore. If I just go like a bit less, detail are still not there. Now that you see the smile starting to appear, it's just a question of scale. Now you see the smile is a bit more refined. So the more you scale, it's kind of uh, change the displacement values with the scale. Yeah, exactly. If you scale on low res, details can get blur or more intense. If you scale on the other way, let's say I go back here. If you scale down instead of up on the low res subdivision level, you're going to see the details going to get crazy now. So that, that's what happened. Kind of change the scale of, uh, of your detailing. So the, the solution of that is to scale on the highest subdivision level. So if you go to the IS one and then you scale down, it's going to retain the detail perfectly. You see? So that's a very important thing to take, to be aware of. Never scale on the lowest subdivision level. This arm I'm going to make it forward maybe. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but it's, it's probably like a limitations. Um, I don't know if I don't I don't know a lot of people who is aware of that. In fact, so because um, when you scale normally, you don't scale crazy, or maybe you just don't notice. So me, if I want to scale a whole sub tool, uh, usually you cannot do it with the tipples master, of course. Uh, I have some other tricks to, to scale a sub tool. You can go to all the IS subdivision levels and scale with the deform, the deformation here, since it's always going to scale from the center of the world. So if you scale everything with that slider, everything's going to be uh, it's going to be scale uh, and align it align up uh, at the end. Uh, so yeah, you can do say if you, you can do a macro on one one object, scale it like the number of time you want, and then use the macro I just showed before to scale all the other object. And then just before launching the macro, you can put all I here, so all the sub tools go to the I uh, subdivision levels. I'm gonna do something very bad here. I'm gonna try to distort this thing. I'm gonna try to do it without distorting too much my shapes. Oops.
yeah, you, you, if you know what it's doing and uh, you want to increase or her, yeah, you want to increase your hit, all that's a good good point actually. Sometimes using uh, artifacts as as tools. So I'm just gonna blur my mask here and try to rotate it a little bit. Not missing too much. Just giving giving it some asymmetry. Maybe lower shoulder. It's already starting to be a bit more interesting. Hey X Fire, long time no see. How it's going man? Something very important when I pose character, what I like to do is to rotate the head. That's what's the twits. That's what's remove like most of the CG stuff. I just mean uh, it's kind of kind of uh, take out the CG CGness look of the the character. So I'm gonna make a picture like maybe a bit like this so uh, I just want to be sure that everything I create is a uh, on, on an angle that is, is interesting like I don't I, I the fasten from front is not that much interesting I find so and I'm gonna rotate those forearms but I'm gonna do it uh, since I screwed up a little bit the poly groups I'm gonna do it on the on the other guy the people's mesh those wires I want it to be like to go inside here so, but that I can always fix this uh, on the other on, on the other mesh when it's all separated well, I think that's gonna be it for the poles pretty simple I'm just gonna start to build around it do some mechanical arms that like kind of trying to repair what's broken Hey, pro 40, 42, 10, hey, Red Edge 3D, thanks, man. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's a concept I did, it's for a picture I'm gonna do, the, that's the IRS here. I did this, I did this a long time ago, and then I'm just recycling it, just gonna do like, a, I'm just doing a quick pose here, and I'm gonna add some elements on top, and then try to create an image. Uh, of it, so I'm gonna render multiple passes and try to do like a, I'm just gonna try to focus on one angle uh, and make a, an interesting image. I don't want like since I don't want to create UVs and all this stuff. Uh, so it's, it's a long process, and since I'm doing this for personal reason, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna texture it in Photoshop. Yeah, it's like, as I said before, it's like, um, it's a robot I wanted to do. Uh, I did some, like, some quick concept before. Uh, I wanted to be like a robot that run very fast and can jump super high and can control his jump with, like, his wings. There. That's our, on his arm here, so he can, like, control his jump. Kind of a Hulk, but, uh, like, a slim Hulk. Yeah, so that's, that's what, it's, it's like, it's flying. It's not flying, it's jumping. But now it's gonna be in a like factory. So I'm gonna make an like I'm gonna maybe duplicate some some of this guy in a factory and then make another one on the side with no arms that's being prepared or stuff. Yeah, I'm too lazy to make the, the legs. Uh. I did, already did the concept, but like 
I don't want to do the legs. <laughs> I should, but I'm gonna. So what I'm gonna do instead of doing the the legs, I'm gonna put some arms that's like kind of swinging it or repairing it. And then maybe put some wire here, kind of if it was broken in a repair shop. So now that I'm, uh, I can always come back with the T pose master to if if like that's kind of my first pass for the pose. And if I'm not too happy about it, I can always uh, come back and then uh, repulse some stuff. So I'm just gonna go in here and then uh, just retransfer the poles. That that might that takes like two three minutes. Hey, right, thanks, man. That's so cool. Yeah, I try to make my own designs more now. Uh, before, like a couple of years ago, I was trying, uh, I was uh, like taking pictures from concept, which is which is a very uh, very fun too. I, I like this because it's very straightforward. You have the concept, you do your three D, and it's like very straightforward. Uh, it's it's kind of a lot less long to do too. But uh, I, I I think I enjoy more more the piece uh, the final piece when I did the design and also it's like it's it's fun it's fun to create it's just a bit longer especially in three D. I will render. I don't know. I think I'm gonna render it in Arnold or Keyshot. Either um, I would love to render it Arnold because I'm very used to it and then just output like some nice material passes and comp it in Photoshop. I think Arnold, I, what would I like Arnold? Uh, it's the Arialite. I could light it with some Arialite. I find it, you can do it in Keyshot too, but I think you have, uh, it's like I'm used to it in Maya and then it's pretty fast. So I could just decimate the old thing, bring it in Arnold as the same, same, same way I would do it in Keyshot. Just, just bring the, the iris without materials and just applying, applying some materials and stuff and render it in Arnold and then comp it in Photoshop. Like use Arnold as Keyshot. But the thing is with Keyshot, uh, so you have the, I have the bridge, so it's like super fast. You can just press one button and go into Keyshot, so I'm not sure again. I might, yeah, might, I might do it in either Keyshot or Arnold. But it's just I, find, I have some control over the... It's... I don't think you have more control in Arnold over the lighting, but I'm I'm more used to it, so yeah. So ZBrush is working how hard now. Hopefully it's gonna work well. So that does this sometimes sometimes you see it working or sometimes the ui just just freeze and then if you click on the ui it's gonna tell you, you do want to close the application or wait until it's finished or just just wait uh nice to use my uh, and zbrush etc what do you prefer for art surface uh, i use a zbrush uh, like 80 to 90 percent of for all my stuff i can retopple sometime if the, the 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 topology is a bit too much complex like very like organic if you have like a art surface that that's blending and then swing to other parts i'm gonna use the retopple software um and then bring it back into zbrush use the creasing and everything so yeah no i i've I'm so used to, to use ZBrush now that last time I just wanted to do a simple, uh, like a super simple um, 3D shape. Then I just started in Maya and I did three clicks. I was like, oh no, it's like, it's too long. It's, it's too it's too far from uh, what I know in ZBrush. So I, I came back to ZBrush straight away to just do my art surfaces. ZModder is awesome. Um, I'm getting very used to it. And also with the dynamesh and everything so much faster. And then you have the topology brush, you have a zero mesher. Zero mesher works like most of the time to for planar surfaces and stuff like this. Is it crashed? Is it working? I hope it's not crashed. 
it would be sad. So that's what I was talking about. And if I click, it's it's when it say this, don't close the program. Just wait. It's gonna it, it's gonna finish at some point. Yeah, it's longer than I expected. Or maybe because I was on, uh, it was all on I uh, subdivision levels here, but it's definitely working. I can check on my um, on my task manager to see if ZBrush working. Probably working. Can go take a coffee. I go into my detail here. ZBrush is using one percent of my CPU. Zero percent. Not good. I know it's gonna. I know it's gonna come back. Uh, I know why it's taking so long. I have a dynamish. I have a dynamish piece in there. Those those parts are long to convert. I should have removed it before. That's what I'm gonna do after. <laughs> Please, Z gods. There we go. Extracting sub tool. Okay, so it just exported the file now. Oh my god. I know it's because of this. You see this dynamesh piece here? It's because of this guy. Better not to have like super dense uh, low res when you do this. <laughs> yeah, they hear me. I need to click, sometimes I need to click on the UI just to refresh it. Uh, my mistake, my bad, sorry about this. Hey, Ice. I serve. thanks, man. That's just the low res. It's gonna, like, in a couple of days, it's gonna be transferred onto my iRes here. If that thing can finish. Because. Because I forgot to remove the dynamesh pieces, which are super dense. I think so. I think uh, yeah, the the with the gizmo with multiple part, you can uh, you can mask multiple uh, sub tool. I don't know if you can mask them at the same time though. I think you have to go and mask them uh, individually on each sub tool, but I'm not so sure. Hey, Teddy. Oh yeah! Oh, there we go. Now it's gonna go into all sub tools and then just transpose my. At least we have something to watch. Usually during this process, I just go on YouTube or. <laughs> You can drag select mini sub tool at the same time with the gizmo mode. Yeah, I know, man. You can uh, with the control shift uh, thing, and you can. Yeah, I know. But uh, can you move them with the move brush? Question. Uh, One hundred and two sub tools. I should merge some parts. Eventually, I usually merge parts when uh, it's all done. Especially if I want to dynamish, uh, if I want to uh, dismate it, I'm gonna have to merge parts because dismate 
100 tools is going to be very long. I think you can dynamesh, uh, you can decimate everything in one, one, one. But it's, it's like you don't have the control because there's some piece you want, you want more, uh, you want more polygons, other piece you want less polygons, so you don't really have uh, control over this when you do it all at once. Yeah, exactly. You can select multiple two, you, you, but it's gonna. I think it's gonna retain the mask, but you have to mask them individually, like on each. Uh, each sub tool you you have to go and mask it or unmask it or mask parts if i remember i can show you after i'm gonna move the the forearm a little bit with the gizmo so uh it's probably i'm always like when i'm I finish model i'm always between uh, 100 or in between 100 and 400 million polygon it's probably 100 this guy because it's not finished, it's, uh, there's no legs. I'm better save after this process, eh? Is there a way to use Mesh and ZBrush as a collider, like live objects in Maya? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use uh, the topology brush which does this, and you can always use... Uh, the Z sphere retopple. Uh, Z sphere retopple, it's like a retopple thing. I I use the topology brush a lot. It's like you just draw polygons on on a surface. Uh, it's not a super super computer. It's but it's I updated the RAM not not so long ago and the motherboard and the CPU. I have uh, i7 like four four core. It's not it's not a six or something. It's a four core, but four point three I think gigahertz. I have sixty four gig of RAM, which is way enough for ZBrush. You can you can still work with four gig of RAM with ZBrush, like it's very powerful software. Uh, if I use kit bashing uh, for the alphas, yeah, for the detailing, but for uh, the pieces, it's all modeled by hand, like the the, the general shapes. Yeah, it was all modeled. Uh, I use some insert mesh for the wires, but I did them, and yeah, no, it's all modeled. I did this a long time ago. Oh yeah. So save, save, don't crash. Yes, I do have a personal Twitch channel, which is uh, there, like there, this one, here. <laughs> Good, and I'm going to save it as a tool. Robot version 02. Ah, I can finally start to do the cool stuff. So yeah, as you can see, there was the low and all I. So if I want to use the gizmo here, the gizmo is at the center of the world. So you can all click here. It's gonna center it to your object here. Just so I can just so I can click on this thing here. That means I can transpose multiple subtools like this here. Then I can control shift drag some subtools. And I can just start to move them around. Yes. And maybe I won't use. Uh, it's because they are all symmetry. I should have done this in uh, People's Master. They are symmetrical. I can always come back with the pose. 
as you can see, I never finished the end. Still a work in progress. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it as an image. So um, I might try to hide the end with some other stuff or Oh yeah, that's my pose, that's cool. So now I can just come back to a normal thing. thing. Thanks for a phone, man. Yeah, I've start, I've stepped to stream a little bit. Uh, I was doing this tutorial uh, for displacement maps with the girl. Uh, I did a girl before on the streams. I was doing a tutorial for her, so I didn't stream her. And then I started to do the texture too, which I need to finish. And then I'm gonna finish it offline, maybe do a tutorial about this. And then I'm gonna probably come back on my personal Twitch channel eventually, pretty soon. Yeah, I'm just gonna, for uh, treat it as an image, I'm just gonna select an angle, like probably this one like here. Instead of doing a turntable of, of it, because there's so much part. I didn't. I never finished the back here. You can see there's still some dynamesh parts. I, I could finish it and do a turntable. Turn table. It could, would be nice. But my, my goal now is just to take an angle, like maybe this one, here. Bring it to Keyshot or Arnold, render from a camera here, and then add everything based on that image. So I won't... Like, in, if I do this, I won't have to sculpt everything behind here. Uh, I'm just gonna focus on one angle, so it's gonna take. It's gonna be a more efficient. Uh, the pose, uh, yeah, no, it's not. It's not a finish. Uh, I can I can always come back uh, to do the pose, change the pose. But it's a long process, so I don't do it too often. Just deleting this tool, so it's a bit uh, faster to work with. Yeah, that would be cool, yeah? And uh, how much do you keep in mind mechanical working on the model? Uh, not, not that much for this guy. On the girl I did before, I, uh, I did it more. As you can see, those parts are pretty messy. But at least the these things, uh, they're, they're working. Uh, it's like this arm is going into this thing here, so parts are like kind of working but this guy I didn't really care the girl I did before uh, she, she, I'm gonna pose it eventually so but uh, yeah like the, the the joints and everything's it's like uh, the goal is to make like some soft part here so maybe just treat it as a material like a letter or something like this art letter or, or like some some soft plastic but yeah, that's gonna be hard to hard here. That's why I didn't move it too much. The shoulder kind of like as you can see, I treat it like pretty soft here, so I can I could always uh, move them around. Uh, the wings I, I kind of did uh, like a hole, so they can they can flap a little bit, they can like rotate a little bit. Ear same thing. Kind of miss it a little much. So what I want to do first is I want to hang this guy. So there's going to be like a chain here that's going to hang. That's going to be hanging from him. So I'm going to do a strap here that's going to be uh, old by a chain. So that's the first thing I want to do. Uh, 
Chandler Decaner. How it's going, man? Well, first of all, to do my uh, chain. Oops. I'm gonna just take a sphere here and use it as a placeholder. To retapo on top of it. Yeah, but uh, no worry, man. I didn't do uh, that much. I just did the pulse, the T pulse master. Now I'm starting the fun stuff. So now what I'm doing is just uh, I just did a sphere, doing a quick quick topology brush here. You go into your brush. You have the topology brush here, so you can just draw polygons on here. I always use this very fast, as you can see. So that's going to be my strap. I can just create it, delete my sphere that I don't need anymore. And since uh, I want to add the thickness at the end, I don't need the thickness right now. Um, just want to show you a little thing here. I can I, I add a loop here because uh, when you control shift and hide some things, if you're on a border with two polygroups, it's gonna unhide everything else, those two polygroups. So they can kind of no way to just uh, unhide this polygroup since it's always sharing this border here because the control shift click uh, works on vertices, it's not on faces. So if I control shift click here, it's hide everything else that the subgroup because it's under vertices. So if I just add here a loop, I have a vertices in the middle here. I can just control shift click on that vertices and now I can have just one side of the one side of the the, the, stra the strap no thickness and then delete delete the hidden here. And I can always remove the remove the middle one after it's like Uh, no, I didn't test it yet. Uh, actually, I didn't do a lot of ZBrush since uh, the summit. But there's something I definitely want to do. It's to add this Accu curve thing that uh, I always forget about. I don't even remember where, where it is. But this Accu curve things. Here we go. I'm just going to add it in my. So I have my UI here. I'll create and just bring it here. And I'm gonna put the accu curve somewhere it makes sense. I don't know. Maybe with my lazy mouse curve things. Or I could always just put it here. I don't know. Here's gonna be fine. The mice close this. Hey, close this. I see double click now, I think. Store config. Now I can have the accu curve. Which I never kind of use. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try this. I can always remove some spans on the edges just to make it easier to move at the beginning and then add them back after. Hey! Yay, watch the summit thing.
It was a nice weekend. So I'm just gonna put it there. So it's gonna. I'm gonna add the tension after. Because right now it's just kind of intersecting. Another thing also is to make it double sided so we see what's going on. As you can see with one sided it's very easier and then I just I just add the other I just add the thickness when I'm done with the strap. I'm trying to put as much as possible um, as much as possible the center the center because that cell straps react most of the time. And also uh, it's very important for straps we have like a straight line here. So you add the tension. So well, that's very straight and then here is gonna be uh, gonna curve around the arm. But that straight line here is very very important. So what I usually do is I just don't add any edges in between, so I, I'm sure I'm sure that's gonna be a straight line. Yeah, man. I went to two two uh, two last summit. I went I went there last year too. I did some workshop with the guys at the at, at ID ID software. We work on Doom. That was pretty nice. And with Andrew Kors too, master in anatomy. And Peter Conan did some workshop there. It was pretty inspiring. It's crazy. Yesterday, I just said that there's a there's a guy who did the a cosplay costume of the messenger. The guy I just I showed on a, the the summit. The costume is fucking awesome. So I just want to bring them as close as possible here. So it actually looks like now I have something decent to work with. I can just start to add some, some edges. If you alt click here, it's it's center it's center the pivot the section. Alt click on here, it's gonna center the pivot point. Oops. If you click on the lock here, it's moving only the pivot point. If you uh, if you click on the lock now, it's moving the object. But you can always click on Alt so it moves the pivot point. As you can see when you click on Alt, it unlock the, the lock. Like if I press Alt, and now I can center the pivot. And now if you, uh, also another thing, uh, if you uh, mask, if you unmask, but if there's nothing masked, it's gonna mask everything else but the selection, which is pretty handy. I'm just gonna add a span here so I can making sure everything's lined up. So now I can just create a lot of tension here because this thing is heavy, so it's gonna create a lot of tension. Strap.
and also when I'm gonna subdivide it when one time it's gonna add it's gonna double the number of polygons so I'm gonna have a bit more control but the thing now that I I want to be sure is that I have rectangles uh, not rectangles but uh, square polygons so I'm just gonna subdivide it a couple of times to be sure I'm doing some squares where I'm gonna have a more even topology the thing I can do instead of doing this I'm just gonna control Z so I can uh, subdivide it oops control D subdivide it once and it's smoothing the whole thing instead of having like a straight span in between like straight polygons it's it's dividing the whole thing and I can just go and delete the lower and delete those those one here in between it's just doubling the number of the uh, polygon but it's also a smooth the, the also smoothing the thing. And how do you uh, guys like the Damien standard too? I didn't try it. I'm definitely gonna gonna try it. Definitely. So we can see now that the strap kind of have, have this tension here. Looks like it's wrapping around the arm. It has a nice tension, very straight line here. So it's like, if you do it like this, there's no tension, but if it's straight, it, nice tension. If I just go ahead and do a dynamic subdiv, it looks like it's very holding this thing. And now I can just add some thickness at the end. And if, if I want to move things around again after, I'm just going to extrude all polygon here. And I'm going to go inside. So that's that's flipping. Since I'm on double, the polygon are flip, but I don't see it. But if I remove the double, I can sit and I can flip it, them back. It's some creasing on the polygroups here. I can just go and crease polygroups. Have some creasing. And I can go and lower the creasing levels here to the tree and smooth it a little bit more so it's maybe two. And now I can just adjust there's some. I find it's very uh, handy to to go like to press it like this for for strap to go like very low res and just go and building on top of it. This guy's a robot uh, that's uh, is broken because uh, here and it's gonna be in a factory with other broken friends. It's kind of a as I said before, it's like a kind of a Hulk that run uh, very fast, but like a slim Hulk. It's like a, a guy who run very fast and can jump super high and kind of control his jump with, with his wings here and his arm wings. So he can like kind of control a little bit like it's it's jumping, but uh, it's not a it's not a flying one. It's like a, it's someone it's like a robot that can run like super quick. Yeah, way too much, uh, way too much sub tools. I could, when you have a lot of sub tools like this, you can always start merging them together.
it's like kind of a I don't know if it is an English word or a, I don't know if we can say this in English, but it's like uh, aerodynamic. Like it's very slim, and then the wind, the wind can like pass through the surface here. Some stuff like this. Yes, folder would be good. There's this plugin yeah, we can can use, but it's kind of. I don't know, I need to try it back, like the Exocide plugin. I'm just gonna try to put this trap on the other arm. I don't think it's gonna fit. That's the thing, when you pull something, uh, you have to do things twice. But I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work, uh, but that's the thing. Since since I'm treating this guy as an image, and that's gonna be my uh, my camera angle here, I don't need to focus on those things here. It's gonna make these things a lot more faster. Looks like it has some soft part, but um, like those shoulder here, those shoulder are kind of uh, soft, so they can uh, kind of bend. There is like some uh, some art part that can just rotate like this. Uh, here, the arm is kind of going into the other arm, so it can kind of can rotate inside here. Uh, here the pack is smooth, or well, kind of, kind of soft and hard at the same time. It's like halfway thinking through it. Uh, I know, like uh, most of the part when you rig a character when you make it moves. Like the rib cage, is not it's it's like rigid. It's smooth, so all this part can be kind of um, kind of rigid. Uh, this part here is a smooth one. The shoulder, uh, of course, where the, the arms connect. The the ab abs here, the neck, very important that can move. And uh, like if you look, if you can look at the skeleton to see what's moving or not. You have the, 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 the clavicle here, the clavicle, you can like uh, move her arm up and down at uh, the shoulder here in, in behind. So that's like kind of a backpack, so it's not moving, but it can move inside but the backpack, it's not moving. Yeah, sub two fuller would be would be really great. Okay. So I'm just gonna make a little hook here. I'm just gonna save this. I'm gonna make a hook and then a chain. Okay. 
I'm gonna make it look very quick here. Yeah, the Exocide Z Plugin Manager too. I'm gonna have to try it. I tried it a long time ago, but I think there's some newer version. Yeah, folder would be awesome. I think it's a it's a feature that a lot of people want that that come back so that to uh, use the clip curve so this thing is flat it's gonna work better with the Q mesh now same thing
I'm gonna crease here the complete edge loop. Crease it like this, just to make the shape a little bit more interesting. Looks more like hard surfaces. <laughs> okay so that's a nice hook so i can just save it so i'm i can so i can make a brush out of it eventually and reuse it so i don't have to, to redo hooks another time in my life just gonna create an insert match a new one now I have a hook insert mesh, that's amazing. I can just bring it here and eventually split it. Eventually I'm gonna have to make a hole in this strap. And it's very important to make it straight, so you have the tension if you have a hook like this, it won't make any sense, right? But uh, I'm talking more like in a, in a subtle way. Like the gravity center has to be has to be like believable. And it's gonna create the kind of a tension into the strap too. Got brush, so I don't influence the other side. Oops. What I'm doing here, it's like I just had this like, and the fact that there's no more tension in the hook, or the hook. Yeah. I'm taking this polygon here with a lip. There we make them closer to it's a good thing the tension point is at the same place That guy should be at least uh, maybe half, half of a car, like maybe one one pound maybe, or maybe, no, what pound is a bit heavy, I would say like maybe uh, 500, that kilo, 500, uh, half of a pound.
if I can go ahead and uh, duplicate this hook to the other side quickly. I hide this trap instead. There we go. Just did one polygroup guy. I can easily select it. Control and then Control Shift click. Down here. And eventually I'm gonna add a chain. Little thing I like to do with straps is to add some side border. So just go here, take the insert, add a very small side border around here, and then extrude poly loop very quickly. One, and then increase poly groups. It looks more thick, a little bit. Yeah, no, uh, but for me the scale, I kind of uh, like to do it in the details. You kind of, you kind of feel that this guy uh, is like I would say that a human, human size would be like maybe getting to the wrist. So it's. It's a pretty huge one. Uh, yeah, I could I could always like just open a guy here, but basically, uh, yeah, like I would be like that tall here. Because uh, the scale. I think that when you're doing a 3D, the scale, uh, you should see it right away on the model. Uh, it's how you do the piece. If, let's say if you do the hooks here, very smaller. Like, it's a good point actually. If you do this hook super small, it might indicate the, the fact that this guy is going to be very huge, you know? Or like, how much detail you put. If you go ahead and zoom in and put some very small bolts and stuff instead of big bolts, you know, it's kind of gonna uh, suggest the scale a little bit too. Uh, when you do creatures and uh, kind of animal stuff, the, the size of the eyes is very important and the size of the head too. If you put a smaller head with very small eyes, it's gonna look, the, the creature is gonna look a lot more uh, huge. But yeah, of course, you can always uh, have super like a building tall bolts. So it's like it's but if you do like a dragon uh, having like a very broad scales with like some very small scales going to tell the, the scale of the, of the dragon if you have like very small detail on it and also the size of the eyes and uh, etc. I could add some broken legs. Uh, I did the concept of the legs and I didn't like it and I don't want to pass too much time so I think I'm just gonna put some wires and then some maybe like a broken piece or something. Hi guys I'm gonna come back in uh, like two minutes maximum. I'm just gonna go grab some coffee.
Hey. Yeah, wires would be nice. I love wires. It's especially like very nice for uh, making the silhouette looks more complex. So like those two wires, it's just the start, but having some wires uh, everywhere, it's like the silhouette gets very more interesting, I find. I'll definitely add some wires. And it's free, it's almost free. It's so, it's so fast to do the diamond and brush. So chain, I think I have some chain. I did definitely already did some chain brush. Red chains. Oh no. Rush. Rope scrolling. That's kind of a tube. That's the brush I did. I don't have that much. Probably have some. Oh, uh, there's a chain here. I just want to check if it's not too dense, because I know I have a chain that is very dense. Okay, so I'm just gonna go take this uh, brush here. And I think in, there's somewhere... Uh, mesh from brush, there we go. So I can just uh, I can just edit that, that thing here how I like. I'm just gonna remove those those fans here. Make it more heavy. Put some creasing. Careful not to forget any uh, any side. Very good. I want it to look very thick. Maybe what I can do and try to inflate them. Looks a bit more thick. Quick to group. I'm gonna have to uh, regroup those two with my new brush. So the important thing here is to have one group at the top, one group in the middle, one group at the bottom. I'm just gonna save this quickly too. 
Later on, I can do my uh, my brush. Um, yeah, when you need two versions of a robot, like a clean, shiny new and a pulse fight all damage version, how do you approach that? I would definitely uh, do another model. Uh, just, just start with the clean version, save it, and then maybe do all the UVs and stuff, so on the damage version you wouldn't have to do it, if, it's, if, if, if it would be for production. Um, so do everything you have to do on the clean one, and then just damage it, and then if you have to bring some new parts or anything, just just uh, make them. If it's for a game, if, it, if it's for a game, I would uh, do just the iRes of a clean, and a iRes of the damage one after the clean is done, and then uh, do different, maybe like... Uh, try to do the topology on the parts that are similar, and then, and then do different topology. Try to try to um, to recycle the part that would, was done for the clean definitively. But yeah, to model, but split them at one at one point. Now I can just go and create insert mesh, a new one. Now I have my insert mesh, and then in my custom menu here I have my curve. I don't want a well point resolution at one is fine. It's pretty good. And then of course not having too much subdivision is gonna help. Like two should be fine. I have my brush, so I can just go ahead, take my insert mesh brush here, save it as. I'm gonna go into my brush folder. Full curve. I'm gonna call it chain. So now I can come back here and just create my chain. Uh, what I can do, there's two things. You can even either create uh, a curve that is straight. Alright, I could create it from a plane. So just up in the plane here in 3D. It's working hard right now. It's probably crashing, so probably saving. Don't know what he's doing. Was saving. Or something he doesn't like right now. Hey Doogie, how's it going man? I don't know. See we're working hard on something that is weird, so probably it's freak out right now. There we go. Now it's dead. Might have to redo some stuff. Oh, I just saved my brush, so it's fine. Did it save? Did it not save? Recover tool. No, nope, looks like it didn't save, so...
That's the first time I think it didn't save for crashing. I hope I wasn't too far. Yep. Oh, I don't have my hooks. That's awesome. Not. Oh, this guy has hooks. So we should be fine. Okay. Well, there's like twice the tool here. I'm gonna reset this. Some funky stuff. Cool thing is I save my save my brush and go in my brush, and I remember I saved it here. Should have it here. Inmail bowl. What is going on? Well, there's something... Something wrong. I'm gonna try something different now. I'm gonna try to load... To load. Just a, just a tool. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if I'd export it as OBG and re-import it. That's a good point. Too much coffee when it's break. Hey, thanks, man. But factor, it's really nice. I want to see you. Is there a way to make a brush that based on given curve will make me same type? Yeah, you can... Uh, there's multiple ways you can do this. Uh, either with pressure... With the lazy mouse. Or you could always use a curve tool. Okay, should I try? Wait a second. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to uh, focus this again on this curve. Where was I? I'm gonna put the link here. Okay. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna export it as OBG. I'm gonna delete it or screw something and port it. PG. Oh, it retains the group, so that's perfect. And make a curve out of it. You know one. Your curve tool. Curve mode. So that's working. And hopefully, I won't break anything now. Uh, 
up in a plane. So yeah, you can always uh, can show this very quick. My box here. I don't know if it's there's so much way you can do this, but you can always uh, take a curve tool like this, and if you go into your stroke here, curve function, curve, curve modifier, and curve fold of in the size. You see, you can you can taper it at the end, and then you can control it with the with the curve here. You can reverse it, see, like this. So it's gonna taper the other end of the curve. But you could do kind of, you know, something like this, and then just dynamish it after or something, reproject it. That could be one way. There's plenty of other ways you could do this. I don't know if that helped. Yeah, exactly, dude. That's exactly it. Hey, Jose Luis Rug 3D. How's right, it going, man? Well, now I have this super plane. I'm just gonna increase everything on this. Increase all. It's very dense for what I need, but I don't care. Take the Z mother here. I'm gonna increase one edge loop. Right here. Well, now I can select my brush. I can go ahead and make it maybe a bit bigger. Cool thing here you can do is create, create, a, create a curve based on the creasing I just did. So my curve is going to be perfectly st straight. So stroke from mesh, creased edge, remove the border and pull group. I have my curve and I can just tap it so I have a super straight curve. Awesome. I can delete. It's like I have a different UE from work, so I'm kind of not used to it anymore. But yeah, and I can go and delete it in things. And then just relate it as I did. It, oh no, I didn't retain my creasing I did. I think I'm just gonna. Uh, I mean, okay, I can do it quickly. It's because when I export it as OBG, didn't OBG don't retain the creasing. Uh, sorry about that. Crease, 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 crease. Grease, grease, and then B. Okay, take my brush. I'm just gonna make a. I'm just gonna append it to it. Yep, yep, yep. So if now I, I have two brush, I have this one, this one, and go back here, and just redo it. I should have creased in. Also, you see there's two, two chain, one on top of the other. That's because I'm in symmetry mode. Uh, so I'm just removing the symmetry mode. I have two chain. Ah, uh, that's because there's the old one hidden somewhere. Need to delete it in. Grow frame mesh. There you go. Delete it in. I'm gonna delete my curve. Not in my chain. Ooh. 
Ooh. Yeah, FBX retained FBX retained the uh, creasing, but it's just I find that the uh, OBG is kind of a nice way to clean your mesh because it's just like points on formation. So if there's something corrupted, uh, the OBG kind of always even in other like Maya or some things when when it's getting very corrupted, I kind of do this. Uh. So I have my chain here. I can just duplicate it better side, maybe just relate it so it's not on this that same thing. And uh, that looks a bit CG. Sometimes it's good to just uh, go and take some chain. Hey Alex, yes, the replay is going to be available on the Pixelogic uh, Pixel uh, YouTube channel. Can export as FBX for pressing. Yep, pressing by ankle. Yeah, you can do this too. Uh, me, I crease by. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could have done it. Yeah, I could have done it like this. That string, but it's already a good topple, man. Don't need to topple it. Check this. Like super clean. You can just uh, like I'm just gonna save this quickly. I'm show you. Cool. If you do like, If you do your topo first before doing your MMM brush and then just lay, lay it out, uh, the topo is going to be fine. I think you can even UV it before doing this. But if you didn't UV, you can just go into UV Master and then unwrap your chain like crazy. If you look at this here, more UV. You can see that uh, the bigness. You can always do auto group. Go there by polygroup and then unwrap it. There you go. That's what it looks like. It's like perfect. Wings, that's perfect for me. But not for like a game, but uh, for like an iris thing, it's perfect. But then I just lost my creasing. Now it's back on. Just did Ctrl Z. How do you retopo UV the chain later on? Uh, like it's like I just said, it's uh, topology is good. You can always do uh, if you do it for a game. Me, I usually like do chain with planes, so you can always do a IMMM of of two 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 planes like this, and then just you uh, make a straight UV. That's gonna work too. Uh, but the, the, the I, I, if I do chains like this, I'm gonna do it. Uh, the topo I want before I re because bef I don't want to re topple this, you know. But I'm gonna do the topo like uh, straight as I want. So you have here your, your tool, you can just go here. And see if you want to make it a bit uh, a bit less less dense, you can always remove some some span on it. So you have like a less dense uh, less dense uh, topology. For me, for me that worked. But yeah, you want to do your topo before. Yes, the replay includes the chat.
Hey, baby Jade. Euh, ouais, français, France. Français. Mais euh, français de Québec. Ok, je come back on my wings, my shitter I like from Longi. So what I can do now is take that chain and maybe just continue it a little bit. Wings. But I think if, if it was a little bit too long for, and then they kind of just. Yeah, Quebecian, Quebecois, like a, 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 a Quebecois, I see. <laughs> I'm just gonna remove the snap so I can intersect them together without, without being annoying. Uh, thanks for the link. Yep, exactly this one. Love this material. It's actually uh, Ashley, the streamer, uh, A-Cube, that uh, showed me this this madcap. I was like, whoa, this madcap is awesome. Then I took it and then now I'm using it all the time. And Delete the curve, and then I'm gonna split unmask point. Oh, that curve, that that chain is a bit smaller compared to the other one, so I can just go ahead and scale it. It's approximately the same size. <laughs> I can always put the pivot point here. And uh, as I'm lazy, I can just get it on the other side for David. <laughs> Les Québécois. So that's a that's kind of a cool chain, and sometimes change is not that much regular. Remove the CGNS a little bit. That's some small detail, but at the end, it's it's what's make the difference, I think. Attention to detail. Yeah, no, the red wax, I just can't. I can't. Like, no. How? How on earth is it possible? <laughs> I'm kidding, but seriously, yeah. Some people like it, but... It's hard. But we all have our preference. Before, I liked the matcap green here, which is nice, too. Basic material, I like it a lot. I tend to just lower a bit the, the color so it's a bit more gray. Or the longy one, which is really nice with the little highlight. I made I made one myself here, the Z-Skin one. Uh, basically what it, what it is, it's like a dual spec shader, kind of. Like a fake one, but 
you can see that there's a broad speck and a small highlight on top of it. So there's two specular. It's good for uh, faces. I use this for for faces, but it's kind of it's kind of nice material too. It's like it's basically the base material with two speck and a bit of bluish tint to the speck. Yeah, my who didn't use the the red wax at first with the. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, it's, what I like about it is that you really see the cavities and stuff. Some some is longer. It's harder to read. This one I like it because it reminds me a little bit of uh, 3D, uh, other 3D packages that I'm used to. Since I added those border on one side, I'm gonna add them on the other side. That's the boring part of working asymmetrically. You have to do everything twice. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna have to make some holes to on the straps. Uh, texture I will do it in Photoshop I think since it's gonna be an image I'm just gonna render some different material and then add some scratches and stuff on side inside Photoshop like render uh, let's say um, a plain super metallic one uh, to, to put that on, on the scratch to reveal some scratch use some masking in Photoshop I'm just trying to uh, read some polygroups those things Yeah, exactly, for a red wax. You have to start with it at one point. Maybe for this chain, since they have exactly the same amount of things, I'm just gonna do one or two group and delete some of them here. Oh, doesn't look too much symmetrical. Yeah, we all... I, I did use red wax when I started. But see, it's kind of a personal choice. Yeah, some people stay with it, some people don't. It's like, why not? If it's, if it's what makes you read your volume, at the, at the end it's like... It's, it's how you see the volumes inside ZBrush and... Oh, you can read through your your model. That's important. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna save this quickly. Save often, save early. And I'm gonna start to add some robotic harm. So I'm just gonna start to sketch them. Which studio is giving the task? I uh, can uh, talk about this. Uh, <laughs> nope. I don't know, in fact. 
I'm gonna get fired if I talk about it. <laughs> if I talk about it. Uh, robotic arms. I'm sorry, I really can talk about this. Yeah, I'm gonna add some uh, robotic arms to like if it was under construction and they were like sewing some stuff with some sparkles and stuff like this. It's like I'm just gonna do a concept, quick concept with cubes here. So if you control click on that one axis, it's not this, is it? If you alt click on one axis, it's like another tree software packages. It scale everything else but that axis. Well, there's gonna be one mechanical harm, like say, like in a not to uh, to repair the character. Yeah, if I look at like a core factory. If I can find some images here, like to kind of those things. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Those things. They're like some robotic arms that just like sue and then do those things on the robot. That's actually a very cool reference. Like exactly this, like fact, the robot factory. Yes, exactly. Yes, I work for EA, EA Motive in Montreal. So that's going to be a harm coming from the back. Wings. And like a human, maybe making half, half size the other thing here. And create the joints after. Fisting here. Make another one smaller. That's going to be the, the arm. This arm is going to work on this part. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, do you work at the Visceral or something like this? Yeah, that that was not a uh, fun, fun things or fun decision that they had to make, I guess. We have our uh, friends, uh, Brendan, who do the ZBrush Live that was working at Visceral. Fucking very sad. I hope he's gonna get the job. Uh, in, maybe he's gonna try to relocate him. He's gonna find a job, and I'm pretty sure this guy's. I'm I'm very sure this guy's very awesome. Hey man, it's not my uh, my decision, eh? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, 
I'm gonna make a two over here. Make any color here. Yeah, the basic two or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like a. It's very like it's the economical model of games nowadays. Unless it's because it's a very like it's a big multinational, right? So they have to. They have a lot of investor and stuff, so they they have to to, to make money. But at the same time, very EA is kind of uh, it's kind of trying to uh, understand the like they they ask a lot of feedback of of players and stuff, and they kind of have newer mentality than they they had before. But of course. Uh, That is not exactly what I wanted. Hmm. What I can do here and position this. Approximately like this, and then I can just lock. I don't have them in my UI. I can lock. Yeah, but I can lock the start and the end. I can. Whoa! whoa, 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 whoa. So it, it won't affect now. Just to make sure that every angle is fine. I can always move things around, but the the more the less you move after the the the, the curves drop, the bit better it is. I can always uh, delete here. My curve and then just refine it a little bit but it's, it's gonna distort the thing so there's some some things you can do with deformers or the transpose line if you move them you can always bend a little bit here but it's not it's not ideal it's yeah, messing a lot with the curve. It's gonna be fine. Can try that accu curve thing, maybe? So it moves things a little more squared. Just to make that pinch here. Anyway. At one point I can I can use this curve. Yeah, what I usually do, it's like I screw the curve and then I use a span to create a new curve. So the new curve is going to be perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah, spend spend would be cool. Base here, I mean. Would be awesome. Of course. Like a, a mix of both. Yeah. Like you just drag your curve first and then you can you can fine tune it with Bezier. That would be awesome. Because I kinda like also the, the, the drag curve moving like a snake. You don't have this anywhere else. That's just concept stage anyway, so uh, if... And also when I'm doing a curve, things I look at, it's like... Uh, since this thing here is closer to the floor and here, it's very important to make like... Uh, I won't care about the geometry anymore. Make that thing looks like there was gravity. Look at every angle, make sure it's straight. There's no curve. And there's gravity to it. That's kind of the harder part. Like you can see the curve here, the kind of an S, that's bad. Kind of breaking this this gravity a little. Kind of Lucas tracks a little bit of the chat, sorry about this. Um, increase all. Increase all here. And then I'm just gonna create a crease. Here. And then I'm gonna go into stroke function frame mesh on the crease I don't know if this is gonna work and work so now I can just go and recreate my curve here if I press six kind of smooth the curve but a bit too much just gonna delete, delete my curve Now it's a lot less distorted, and I can move the whole thing. Anyway, I have some other idea for this. Now I can always use this curve. I think, I think, I think. I have a regular tube here. I always take this geometry to create a small wire like this. It's always cool. If I press 5, it's just gonna snapshot it. And then create another one. It's curve. Curve or AZ and cool. Free detail. I should use the snap. Snapping function, it's on.
And then eventually... This guy here, and then create some poly loop extrude things like this.
that's the complete of the music. It's a uh, nine inch nails. It's one of the only. Uh, it's uh, one of the only music I can play because there's some royalty uh, things to the music, and if I play some uh, any music, it's just, the the stream's gonna be muted. book which book do I have a book never did a book I uh, leave to, to do uh, well, I put a Malgraf. Malgraf, it's, it's kind of a scammer nickname. It's my... Uh... Oh... Thanks, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, au Québec on dit plus portfolio, ça tu vois, je pensais parce que I'm a bit vagin. But uh, yeah, I thought you mean like uh, que, que j'avais fait un livre. Ouais, thanks man, merci beaucoup. Merci, merci. some rare for this thing. I'm just gonna add both and some of those things. It's called a groove. If you extrude a polygroup border in polygroup inner, extrude the whole thing. Polygroup border, sorry. Or polygroup islands. That's the trick. 
and you just hit shift it won't extrude it but uh, i can extrude it because it's gonna be good uh, just face i don't want to add the group there so I'm gonna have to create a joint here. Like a cylinder. Others.
putting a joint here. Hey, Nano, how's it going, man? Hey, Bentavulu. Yeah, you miss uh, basically the old chunk because I'm finishing in the uh, eight eight minute. But yeah, you can uh, watch the viewers. There's gonna they're going to be on the the Pixelogic channel and YouTube, and on this on the the Twitch. If you're on Twitch, they're going to be into the video section and like uh, as soon as it's over. Well, someone before mentioned trees by angle, but it won't work because it's a cylinder. Anyway, I'm just gonna do those trees. Really. Oh, look how. How cool this mother is. I cannot do this in so fast. I can just extrude the poly loop and if I hit control it's making a new mesh. Do it again. Good deck. Awesome. Do it again. I love this mother, there's so so much stuff. It's But sometimes selecting polygon, especially for long. Thanks, dude. Dude, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, some some of it. Especially a cylinder like this, it's very very handy. Start here, here. Through it. Maybe inside. I'm just gonna make two other ones. Hey Gary, what's going on? Yeah, as your mother, it's like it's hard. It's hard at the beginning, but when you get your used to it. Very nice. Now with the boolean system too. I didn't use it that much now, but I will. 
be add some booleans in there. Wait. I think this character is gonna be uh, is gonna have seen like three three era of uh, ZBrush. Like I started in four or six, I think. I was doing everything without the Zimbabwe in the beginning with like some poly poly groups and stuff like this. Especially the head, the, the head was all done in four or six, I think. Then four or seven came out at one point. I think I did the arm in four or seven. Now it's like four or eight. I didn't touch this guy since a couple of years. I started like two or three years ago. And now I'm just recycling it, adding some detail. Oh, I think it's crashing. Oh, it's a good time to end the stream, I guess. You know, I'm gonna save. When Zebra start to think on stuff that it doesn't think usually. Maybe you should make some engagement. Yeah, then you could do your engagement ring into the Z-Mother and print it and then use it. Whoa, everyone's joining when I'm leaving. What's, what's that? <laughs> I'm leaving in two minutes, guys. But uh, thanks for passing by. Thanks, guy, for. Ciao, dude, man. So yeah, uh, I think that's that's it. That's gonna be it for today. We'll see you uh, next month, where I'm gonna probably continue this guy, or I don't know. It's like very random my stuff, so. This guy or the other alien I just started, or maybe a new one, but probably this guy, because I need to finish it at one point. So uh, yeah, I'm going. So uh, take care, guys. Thanks, thanks for joining in. Uh, have a awesome, awesome month, and uh, see you next time. I'm sorry, Gary. Like four hour, maybe later on next month. Ciao guys, peace, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze,